Hive. I received a request by someone else who is working on uh, bringing home the trees or um, this pattern by uh, Stacy West from Buttermilk Basin, which is actually called Bringing Home the Tree. I keep calling it Fresh Trees. <laughs> Well, it says fresh trees after all. Um, but I got a request from one of our subscribers who is also working on this same project, um, was curious and nervous about the half square triangle paper. And I totally understand that because the, uh, every time I have used it, if you have any issue <laughs> with the reading instructions. Like if you are instructionally challenged, that's what I call myself, instructionally challenged, then the half square triangle paper is a challenge. It makes the half square triangles absolutely perfect. So when you have a ton of them, it is worth it. And as you can see from this photograph, Every block in this quilt is surrounded by half square triangles. So that is a lot to make. And using the triangle paper is one way to do it. And you get them done fast and they are perfect as long as you follow the instructions. So, I have previously used triangle paper from Primitive Gatherings and it works great but this time I'm trying a different brand because uh, the quilt shop I called uh, didn't have the Primitive Gatherings half square triangle so I am going to be using Laundry Basket Quilts Edit to Sitar's half square triangles and her triangle paper um, is a different um, texture and shape than the Primitive Gatherings but I think it's going to work great so initially what I'm going to have to do is I have all of my fabrics that are going on one side of the triangle paper and then this is the consistent fabric that goes on the other side. So I shall be doing a lot of cutting according to the directions for those who are instructionally challenged. I have had to read them three times and I think I've got it now. And once I get them cut, then the next step will be to use the half square triangle paper. The good thing about this video is that G edits everything. So <laughs> if I use my trucker quilt room beehive language, he could edit it out because I have ruined fabric not reading the instructions. So give me a moment to cut up my fabric. As you can see, I have a different top. It's a new day and that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you is it looks like because of the magic of the internet that quilters suddenly get something done. But that is not the case. And I am always asked, how do you get so much done? And the reality of it is, I am not finishing any faster than the rest of you. But I did pick up a tip a few years ago from a girlfriend named Sandy, who seemed to just have bucket loads of projects always done and when I asked her what her secret was she said 15 minutes at a time and I took that to heart so what I'm showing you is that I did not get this all done just like that it was in little snippets and so yesterday we talked about that we were gonna do the half square triangles. Well, I only had that 15 minutes. So then the next day, I realized that really the next step for me was to cut down my blocks. 
to the size designated in the pattern. That is one of the scary spots for me because you don't want to cut it wrong because then your quilt won't fit together. So it takes me a while of measuring and remeasuring. And because I'm so challenged instructionally, I have to read everything several times. And then when I go to cut, I am looking over and over and over again to make sure that I have got the right measurements before I actually slice my blocks. I also, with my ruler, luckily for these different Omnigrid rulers, you can see through them, I am, I am trying to adjust the motif so for me, I have it kind of balanced in the background. Uh, because I know that'll bug me later. So it took me probably about half an hour, I would say, to cut down my blocks. Now, as I lay them out, I can visualize where those half square triangles are going to be going. So as I make them, I'll fit them in here and I can see if they fit. The great thing about cutting down your blocks and making your stitching blocks a little bit bigger is that when you cut them down, they're going to be the exact size that's required for those half square triangles to fit. And the half square triangle paper is going to make perfect half square triangles. So that is the step for today because now I've got to go. I've got a stitch group and I am going to be working on an old project, hand quilting it, and so um, I have that. It's been going on for a year, so you know how it goes. Not everything gets done in one sitting. It just looks like it because of the magic of the internet. The next step will be to uh, cut my half square triangles, and when I was looking at my um, fabrics, I decided I wanted a little, this was one of the fabrics that was provided, and it's a, a wonderful fabric, but I, I decided I wanted a little bit darker, darker red, because this is the fabric that is going to be in every half square triangle. So I have changed out that light plaid to a deeper punch red, and then I have all these other beautiful fabrics that were provided um, for this project. So that will be the next step is cutting for the half square triangles. And then we'll meet back here on another day. Welcome back. As uh, you can see, I have a haircut and it's a different day, a different shirt. So that's how it goes. I take advantage of an hour here or an hour there and um, get a project done that way. There's no way that I'm, again, telling you that I like power through these projects and get them done. Sometimes it's just a stitch at a time. So today, I'm actually looking at my half square triangle paper. This is uh, the laundry basket pack. It comes in a five by seven plastic envelope. And I have to say, I really like the feel of her triangle paper. It's like very thin and, and it has, um, as you can see, it has the markings on it. And the instructions say cut two rectangles five and a half by 20 out of your fabric and place them right sides together on this paper and then pin them. Uh, then you will sew on the dotted line. Here's where I usually make a mistake. Sew on the dotted line with a closed stitch. So I'm going to decrease my stitch length. Cut on the straight line and then press open, tear the paper away and you'll have perfect, for me, one and a half inch triangle paper. So we're going to give it a try. I'm putting my fabrics right side together and then I have my sheet on top of those 
two pieces and I'm going to pin and secure this paper to the fabric. How hard can that be? Oh, I love that this paper says Sitar Family Tradition. I'm not quite sure how many, how much one should pin, but you know, what I've learned in quilting is it's better to pin more than less. So I'm going to put several in here. So now I am just about, I think I might put one in the center of this just to keep this paper from shifting. So because we have to rip this paper off, it's uh, not going to be reusable. So. Here we go. Let's do some sewing. Sew on the dotted line with a closed stitch. Cut on the straight line. So I decrease my stitch length. We'll see if I decreased it enough. And I'm going to start sewing. Oh well. It would help if my needle was threaded. <laughs> I'm going, it doesn't look like it's sewing. Well, it looks like the paper is almost being um, cut by my stitching. Just turn in the corner here and that part will be cut off and now I'm going back the other way. You just have to keep in mind Stitch on the dotted line.
as you can see now, I have sewn uh, with a small close stitch down all of the dotted lines. So the next step will be to trim this off into a perfectly good, uh, nice looking rectangle and then start cutting these lines here, the solid lines. I'm going to cut all these solid lines and hopefully we'll have a set of one and a half inch square half square triangles. Let's give it a shot. Oh shoot. I gotta be careful not to let my ruler slide. Now comes the scary part, cutting all of the solid lines. Yep, it looks like I have cut all of the solid lines. So let's see. So here is the paper. Oh, it just it it's such oh, it's such great paper. It just it's already been cut by my sewing that it just comes off so easy. It's um not regular paper. It's like really lightweight paper. And so let's see what that looks like. Oh. I'm going to go press it and then we'll take a look at how accurate it is. Look at that. A perfect two inch half square triangle that when finished will be one and a half inches. That is pretty darn snazzy and this half square triangle uh, paper by Edita Sitar is just uh, I love it I am loving it so I'm going to continue working on these half square triangles and then see if we can get our inner border all set As you can see, I'm getting quite a pile of half square triangles. This is only about half of them. So what I'm going to do is, instead of stitching in front of the TV tonight, because this looks awful boring, I'm going to sit there and rip paper off while I watch some Netflix. I think that's a good thing to do, rather than take up some valuable sewing time by um, ripping paper off here. So wish me luck. Hi everyone. Well this morning G, Enzo and I just got back from a walk in the woods and so I've got a lot of oxygen in my system and I'm ready for the next step. So I am um, 
like I told you before, I spent the evening when watching TV and morning coffee peeling all the paper off of all of these half square triangles and I I'm, I have to tell you this to me is so much better than um, cutting each individual block and making sure they're the right size this was like a no-brainer and you can just peel the paper off when you're doing you know passing time in front of the Olympics so now the next step will be to iron these opened and get them all in a nice neat pile using my flatter which is going to make them very crisp and then I'm going to line them up on the project so that I get the color distribution that I want and then I'm going to start sewing them together in rows and putting that top together so we'll see you at the next step hi everyone so today is not a sewing day because we are hanging out with our youngest grandson but I wanted to give you a little update on our Bring Home the Trees project. What do you think? Huh? Yeah. So what I've been doing is I've been ironing and cutting apart, you know, dog, cutting off the dog ears on these little perfectly made half square triangles using Edita Sitar's uh, triangle paper. And then I've been arranging them around the project. Now the way I've been doing this is I haven't just laid everything out. I decided that this long strip was too long a strip with these half square triangles to um, just make it all in one piece. So as you can see I have been putting together squares. So this half square triangle segment I made around this way and then I did this and then I did this and then I connected this to this. That kept this whole line of half square triangles from bowing or stretching and I think that's working really good. So now I've laid out distributing the way I wanted my colors to be on this strip and then I am sewing them together and I'm kind of chain piecing them so what I'm doing is I put a pin so I know this is number one this is the beginning and then I sew this one to this one then I come pick up these two and sew them together then I pick up these two and sew them together then I sew this segment to this segment because I traditionally always screw up this part where I have one flipped or one color wasn't in the place I wanted it. So it allows me to get up from my sewing machine, stretch a little bit, pick up the, thing, uh, the pieces and then go back, sit down and sew. And that is better body mechanics and I haven't had to rip out one piece in this whole segment. By doing it that way. So that's how it's coming together and when we have another sew day we'll, we'll get it all together, huh? Say bye bye to G. Now that's Enzo. Enzo's chilling. So here we are. Ta-da! It went together just perfectly using um, the Laundry Basket Quilts half square triangle paper which was one and a half inch finished and I'm here to tell you that this fit perfectly so perfect in fact that when I went to cut my borders they just it was like easy peasy so um, again just to kind of go over it using the half square triangle paper I made a bunch of squares I have probably about 
30 or 40 squares left over, half square triangles, but I am going to use them to make just a wall hanging of this one block, because I just think he's adorable, as a Christmas gift. With this going together, I decided, as I showed you in the last segment, to put it together in segments rather than try to put this whole thing, whole strip on here. I actually pieced like this. Put this to this and then did these two sides in the top, then this to this. So I broke it down in segments so I wouldn't get that torque that sometimes comes with so many little pieces on the outside. But I couldn't be happier with how easy it went together. And I used the flatter, which was the spray by Soak, uh, to, when I uh, pressed these half square triangles. So they were just so perfect. Um, this pattern, Bring Home the Trees by Buttermilk Basin, who is one of my favorite designers, uh, if you want to get it, you're just going to go on her site for this. Or if you're patient, I'll be giving away one of the, this pattern on the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway in December of this year on the woollymammoth.blogspot.com site. So there you go. I am happy to have another one done. This will be hanging in the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. So I'm really excited about that. And I uh, used some of what I learned from Sue Spargo, who is another one of my besties, that uh, I love using her stitches every so often in this primitive quilt. So thank you. I hope that helped with those who were worried about the half square triangles. <laughs>